Hi there buds, as you guys can see I've done quite a few cooking with cannabis videos now on my channel and one of the things that keeps coming up in the comment section that I keep getting a ton of different like facts about and different statements and people just kind of like throwing out information asking questions and some of it's like not necessarily accurate information is about decarboxylation. Decarboxylation is the process of toasting your weed to convert the THC that is in it in its natural state into THC, which is a molecule that your body can use and that's what gives you the euphoric high effects from your edibles. Now, if you do not decarboxylate your weed, prior to using it and infusing, you are not going to get the maximum potency from your herb. Yes, it may still work as far as infusing a straight, like non-decarboxylated weed into an oil or a butter or something, particularly if it sits a long time because the decarboxylation process could start while it's cooking, but even still, Everyone that I have talked to and every type of edible expert I have seen online has recommended to decarboxylate your weed prior to using it for infusing in oils, butters, or basically any type of infusion. Now let's get to how to decarboxylate your weed. There's a lot of information on how to decarboxylate your weed and there's a ton of different numbers depending on who exactly you ask. But what I've come to see is that most people recommend about 240 degrees for 40 minutes is what you would bake your cannabis at. Now, how would you bake your cannabis? This really <laughs> also varies depending upon who you ask too. Some people say grind up your weed prior to decarboxylating it. Some people say break it up. I've always been told that you can break it up. Um, but you could also grind it as well. It really doesn't matter. The whole point of breaking up the bud is to ensure that it all gets a chance to get toasted on every side. It increases the surface area, meaning like if you were to toast a whole bud like this, only the exterior of it is going to get toasted, where if you break this up, then this little part will get toasted, this little part will get toasted, this little part will get toasted. You're just increasing the surface area, therefore it's going to toast better and ensure that all of your herb gets decarboxylated. Some people recommend that you do not cover up your weed while decarboxylating because it needs room to breathe. I would say that you can totally cover it with aluminum foil. I've done this a ton of times and it keeps the smell down in your house a lot. And there's a lot of things that people use to decarboxylate weed in that doesn't have an open oxygen or open air environment. So I really don't understand that concept. I would think covering it with aluminum foil is probably the best way to decarboxylate weed in your house just because it is going to smell too high heaven if you do not have some type of cover on whatever you're baking in the oven. So put your weed in an oven safe dish. Cover that with aluminum foil. So let's place this in the oven at 240 degrees for 40 minutes. A lot of people also have asked me, how do you know when your weed has been decarboxylated? Well, there's really no like telltale scientific way to know like, hmm, has my weed reached decarboxylation yet? But there is a way to kind of visually look at your weed and know if it is at that point of decarboxylation or not. You're going to look for a lightly toasted color. When you use cannabis to begin with, it is green. It is a vibrant green, um, just like grass or any other plant. But when you toast it in the oven, it gets to be a lightly goldeny brown color once it's decarboxylated. It's not brown, like not like burnt or crispy brown, but it's just a lightly toasted color. I'll show you guys once this gets out of the oven exactly what it looks like compared to what it looked like when we put it into the oven. Another thing I got asked was, does it matter what type of dish I use to decarboxylate weed? And I would say no. If you are decarboxylating a large amount of weed, a cookie sheet might be the best way to go. Again, to increase the surface area um, that your cannabis is going to be toasted on by enabling it to be spread out. So if you're doing anything over a half ounce, I would probably recommend a cookie sheet. If you're doing anything less than that, any type of oven safe dish would be appropriate. 
um, because I am only decarboxylating a gram of weed, I only used a small little dish because I'm going to use this to make a single cup of cannabis tea. All right, you guys, I just took the weed out of the oven and I wanted to place the decarboxylated weed, which is this one, next to the same exact weed that has not been decarboxylated, which is this one, to show you guys exactly what color you guys are looking for. As you guys can see, the one on the right, which is decarboxylated, is a little bit darker. Like, it's got this like brownish, goldish hue to it. It looks a little dry and crumbly. The one on the left looks green and fluffy and it's still vibrant. You're looking for a darker, deeper green color and you're looking for a nice, goldeny, toasted looking color. That's basically the best way to tell that your weed has been decarboxylated is by looking at it and make sure that it has a nice, even gold tone to it. And that's how you decarboxylate your weed. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, let me know if this is how you've always been taught to decarboxylated weed, or if you learned something new, let me know down below. And subscribe to my channel because I do three new weedy videos every single week. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys around for whatever stony activity or video I come up with for next time. Bye guys!